Hello crew, today we're going to do a problem that deals with the ideal gas law, which you can see over here, the well-known PV equals NRT, that's pressure, volume, number of moles, over here the T is temperature, and then we have R, which is the ideal gas constant. I've given two different variations of the ideal gas constant here, remember it is a constant quantity. But in order to come up with any quantity, you need the number and you need the units that that number is presented in. And so you'll notice that I have different numbers for these two different variations, but I also have different units for them as well. And so when you combine both the number and the unit, you get the same quantity. So it is indeed a constant. The problem I hope will be pretty straightforward for us. I'm giving us some information about the volume of a room through its dimensions and I'm asking us to find the number of moles of air and I give some other conditions as well. I added a second part to this problem where we're going to use the average molar mass of air. Remember air is a mixture predominantly of nitrogen and oxygen but some other things as well. You can still talk about what the average molecular mass would be for all the species. So we are going to do that calculation. And ultimately, we will calculate the density of air in a particular set of units, which I have there. So let's go ahead and get to work on this problem. Certainly, we're going to start with part A. It says, how many moles of air are in a 3 by 4 by 2.5 meter room if the room is at 22 degrees Celsius and 0.925 atm? So the key to any problem like this is just staying organized. Here's the equation I'm going to use. I need to pay attention to the quantities that I'm plugging in, and I really need to pay attention to the units. P for pressure, I have 0 0.925 atm. Let me move down here for the volume calculation. I'm implying length times width times height. For the room there, it's just a box. We're not going to worry about anything that might be inside of the room taking up space. Notice each of these numbers has three significant digits. I'm just going to save a little writing time though and say 3 meters times 4 meters times 2.5 meters. If I do that math, that is going to be 30 meters cubed with my 3 meter units multiplying together. So I'll come up here and rewrite that. 30 meters cubed. Again, I'm just staying organized with my information. N is what I'm trying to find. R we always have. And T is going to be over here. At this point, you should come over and look at the units that we have available to us for the different variations of the ideal gas constant. We are going to pick an R, look at its units, and then make sure all of the other variables have corresponding units. That's the only way that we're going to get things to cancel. For us to finish off temperature, you need to come over and recognize over here that both of these, and in fact pretty much all variations of the ideal gas constant, are going to be using Kelvin you have to be in an absolute temperature. There is an absolute temperature called Rankine in the English scale. It doesn't get used very often. But it's not going to be good enough for us to just plug in 22 degrees Celsius. So if I come down and calculate my temperature, we know it's simple to do that conversion. 22 degrees Celsius plus my 273.15 is going to give me my temperature in Kelvin, which I'll just write up here. 295.15 Kelvin. I'll do rounding just one time at the end for my significant figures. So again, let's look at the units of the ideal gas constant. You will notice my numbers have Kelvin, so that's great. I will end up solving for N in units of moles, so that's great as well. As of right now, my volume is in meters cubed, but my pressure is in ATM. So you'll notice neither of these values are set for exactly what I need, which just simply means I need a simple unit conversion. I either need to take my cubic meters and put it into liters so that I would entirely be accurate with that upper value, or I need to take my ATMs, my pressure, and I need to go to Pascal's. Either is fine, and that will dictate which R I'm going to use. I'm going to opt for the first option that I said, which is going to mean that we no longer are at all interested in this particular value. 
I picked that one because that's an easy conversion to do. 30 meters cubed. Remember this number actually has three sig figs from these guys up here. The conversion is that in one cubic meter there are exactly, so that has infinite sig figs, a thousand liters. So if I come up here I can alternatively write this as 30,000 liters where I have three sig figs. I could write that like this if I wanted to be very clear about that. Okay, now we're ready to just plug in. I'm going to clear some of this board space. My pressure is 0 0.925 atm. Volume next, 30,000 liters. That's going to be equal to the variable n that I'm solving for, r, 0 0.0821 liters atm over Kelvin mole. And then finally my temperature, 295.15 Kelvin. We did a lot of work up front to make sure our units would cancel out, so hopefully this is going to work. See down on the right side I have Kelvin in a denominator, Kelvin in a numerator. And then this thing that I'm about to solve for will have units of mole, which would cancel the mole right there so that I would have all of my units canceling. It's just the algebra now, dividing both of these numbers over to the left-hand side after multiplying those together. And if you do that, you get n is equal to 1145.2 mole. Again, if I come up and look at my significant figures, my temperature was good out to this tenths place, so that means I have four sig figs there. Remember, my volume actually had three sig figs over here. My pressure had three. I'm limited to three, so my final answer, which I think I'm going to squeeze in right up here next to the question itself, is 1150 moles. So that's my final answer. Now let's go ahead and move on to B. B asks us to find the density of the air in units of kilograms per meter cubed. There's a couple ways you could do this. Almost as a review here, let's look at PV equals nRT. I know that molar mass is equal to grams per mole, so that's the mass per N moles, which means N is equal to M over molar mass. This quantity can be substituted in PV is equal to M over molar mass RT. And if I do some rearranging, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this M here, and I'm going to take this V and I'm going to put it in the denominator over there because mass divided by volume, that is density. Molar mass needs to come up onto this numerator on the left-hand side, and RT goes over into the denominator. Lots of things moving, but it's going to be P molar mass over RT is equal to mass divided by volume, which is equal to density. So one approach to calculate the density is to just plug in the known pressure that we have, select the correct R value for the units that you're using, use temperature in Kelvin, use your molar mass. If you go about it this way, you will find that you will get a density and you just need to be careful of your units. It's going to be in grams per, the grams comes from this molar mass here, grams per mole. And then the volume, it just depends on how you end up sorting this out with your R. You've got liters in one of the variations. You've got meters cubed in a different variation. You just need to pay attention to that so that you actually know what your density comes out in for this denominator. I just wanted to show that, but it's actually probably easier for us to just go to mass divided by volume. I'm going to go back to my number that wasn't rounded before. This was my answer from part A, though. That many moles, then I'm going to use my molar mass conversion factor, 28.97 grams per one mole, gives me a mass of 33,176 grams. Or, because I'm going to ultimately need to go to kilograms per meter cubed, 33 point one seven six kilograms and then using that density as mass divided by volume I'm just going to take this mass that's right there and divide it by my volume in meters cubed because that's what was asked for and I had thirty point 
zero meters cubed. That time I'm showing my three sig figs. And if I write that answer again with my three significant figure rounding, then I find that my answer is 1.11 kilograms per cubic meter. And that is my final answer for part B. Just a mental check, does that seem right? That is about right. Liquid water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. I recommend you always memorize that number. If you did the conversions on that, you would find that liquid water is also 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And it is a good rule to say that liquid water is about a thousand times more dense than air or the equivalent gas at roughly room temperature and atmospheric conditions. It's a rough estimate but it's a nice thing to remember. So anyways we've completely solved our problem and hopefully it made sense to you and if it did you should let your computer know.